Starting lesson 7.4, solve and write multiplication equations. We looked over this, uh, we looked over this warm up here. Matthew's downloading ringtones. The cost to download each ringtone is $2. And X is the number of ringtones. Hence, we can't leave our number of ringtones alone. It always, the two goes with each of those. And he spent a total of $10. So now what I want us to do is solve this. But when we solve, we have to show our work. That doesn't just mean, oh, I'm gonna show the answer. You did the work in your head. Think of how you did the work in your head. It's show your work, not show your answer. Think of how you got the answer in your head. So what did you do in your head, Rocco, to get the answer? Yeah, you didn't do much. That's because it's not gonna be much showing our work. It's not gonna be much showing our work. What did you do, Malia? <laughs> She divided each side by two in her head. Huh? Yeah. So she divided each side by two in her head. And what do we get when we divide two by two, Hannah? Exactly, so when we get it, it's not zero, two divided into two groups is one. When we do subtraction, we're aiming to get zeros because then they go away. Here, then we now just have one X. But what we do to one side? Uh, we do it to the other. Excellent. So what's 10 divided by two? Perfect. So we get one X, or simply X, is equal to 10 divided by two, which is five. So all the showing your work is, all the showing your work is, is this one step here. That's the only step that you really need to do and that none of you are doing. So the same way, we need to show our work for this one. 3x is equal to 6. What is the step that I need to take, Andrew? So, as Lily said, we divide each side by three. Three divided by three becomes one. It's a common misconception that it becomes zero, but then we would have zero unknowns. And then if we have zero unknowns, then it just doesn't work. So it becomes one. So we get X equals, and six divided by three on our fingers is two. So Rocco pointed out that the reason that we divide uh, three by three get one and it's one X is the identity property, but yes, so we don't get zero Just get used to saying that. Oh miles said that Miles said that uh, just because we are used to them canceling out doesn't mean they go away completely. So I want you guys to Let's see Michelle What's the first step that we do here? Divide each side by three so one thing that I always know when we're doing this is we're always gonna have three rows of equal signs. Three rows of equal signs. That's just what you should get used to for showing the work. The first row we have is our initial equation. The second row we have is the steps that we're taking. So we're dividing them by three. And dividing by three is equal to dividing by three. That step we've proved is true. Three divided by three goes away because it becomes one. 15 divided by 3. What is 15 divided by 3 then? Romario. 15 divided by 3, Romario. Excellent. 5. And what is 3 divided by 3, Raphael? What's 3 divided by 3? 1. Excellent. So we're left with just 1x or simply x. So we get x equals 5 there. Excellent work. What about this one? I want someone to walk me through all of the steps. I want someone to walk me through Lucy. Perfect. So we're not always just dividing by this number on that side. That's not always how it works. We're not going to do divide by eight. We want to, who knows what it's called. Who remembers what it's called when we're doing something specific? Why we pick a certain number to divide by? Why are we dividing by a four instead of dividing by this eight? Why are we doing that? I want to see. Let's see. Daniel? 
It has the X, so what's it called, Ben? Nope. What is it called when we have that, Daniel? It, the X is a variable. So we are doing what to that variable, Rocco? Hannah? Isolating the variable. We're isolating the variable. So we isolate the variable by getting it alone. Lucy, so what are we dividing by? Perfect. We divide each side by four. Four X divided into four groups is X. Eight divided into four groups is two. So this is our answer. Again, you could also write it as X equals two. Are these things different at all? They're the exact same thing. They're the exact same thing. So, for C, I want Melanie. Tell me what we're doing. Perfect. We divide two. Let me use the right pencil. We divide by two to each side. And then what do we get? X equals seven. Perfect work. Those become one. This becomes seven. So for D, let's look at D together. It's a little harder. In 2004, Penn Hotto and Simon Murray walked seven or 680 miles to the South Pole. The trip took 58 days. Suppose they traveled the same distance each day. Write and solve a multiplication equation to find out how many miles they traveled each day. Now, What's our unknown? Um, it says it in our sentence. So our unknown is going to be, Emerson, what is it? Uh, awesome. The unknown is how many miles they traveled each day. He also looked at a great place, too. I saw him. He looked straight to the bottom. That's because typically the bottom of our problem when it's asking us for something, that's what our unknown is. So... How many miles he traveled each day? What do you want to use to simplify that unknown? What do you guys want to use? What variable? You can pick any variable you want, Rocco. R. He picks R. He got very excited because he got to pick R for Rocco. Exactly. You can pick any variable you want. I was thinking D for distance or for days total. There was a ton of different things. Now. Now. Here. He walked, or they walked uh, 680 miles over 58 days. What is my equation going to look like? What is my equation going to look like besides seeing the same hands? Oleg, can you tell me what my equation could look like? So we had this written down as a guess. 680R is equal to 58. How do we know that that's not right? How do we know that we accidentally puzzle piece matched the wrong parts, Lily? 680 is bigger than 658. That's true, but sometimes we might get a really low decimal number. But based on reading this problem, what is it, Lucy? Yes, this we know is our total. So because we know it's our total, it should be on the other end all by itself. So, since it's our total, it should be 680 is equal to. Also, what else does it ask us in that highlighted sentence that I covered? What else does it ask us? What is it saying? Can someone read that sentence, Miles? How many miles he travels each day? And when we know that each, what does that mean? When we know that each, what does it mean, Ben? So, our highlighted portion, our unknown, is how many miles they traveled each day. I underlined that each here. Let's look back at our warm-up. Why is this 2x? What does that 2x mean? 
What does it mean, Adriana? Each X is $2. Each X is $2. So if we look here, each day they go R miles. How many days are there? How many days, Anita? So every 58 days, there's 58 days. Each day they go R miles. So each day has that many miles that it goes. Each day has that many miles that it goes. Oh, you're smart. So now is when we would show our work. What's our next step? Now that we've written our expression, now that we've written it, let's solve that. Here, what is the next step that we do? Malia. So, exactly, she said multiply 58 by R. Perfect, but can I do that? Do I know what R is? No, I have to isolate the variable. You have to isolate the variable. So how, Malia, do I isolate the variable? Yeah, so we're gonna divide each side by 58. How do I know that I'm dividing by 58? Why is it 58 I'm dividing by, Rocco? Yeah. We want to isolate that variable. We want to isolate that variable. And that 58 is being multiplied to that variable. If you forget that it's being multiplied, it's because it's repeated addition. Every single day we go certain miles. What is repeated addition? Repeated addition is multiplication. Yes. So we do the opposite of whatever step is happening. We do the opposite of whatever step is happening. Here, you see we divided, we divided. We do the opposite. So we divide each one by 58. So how many miles did they travel on each day? I'm going to call on someone to solve it, so I want every person to be working on it. I was asked if there are remainders. Are, do we deal with remainders anymore? No. No. We deal with decimals mostly. Now, this question says about. It says about. When it says about, what I want you to get is to the tenths place and then essentially round. Or even keep it in the tenths place. Either way works. They walked about that many miles each day. Get it to that tenths place. Awesome, Lucy, what's the answer? Yes, she got 11.724 and she just rounded it, uh, rounded it to 11 and 7 tenths or 7 hundredths or anything because it works like that. We had 680. We had it split into 58 parts. 58 goes into 6 zero times. It goes into 68 once. Here. That's because I'm doing it wrong. It's 100. It goes in one time. 58. Now we have our decimal because we bring that up. Here we are left with 42. We bring down zero. It goes in seven times. We keep going. It doesn't matter. We know that it is approximately 11 and 7 tenths. So they walked about 11 and 7 tenths miles each day. 11 and 7 tenths miles each day. For these first ones, it's pretty easy. We have 2a equals 6. As Raphael pointed out, for number 1, it is 2a equals 6. We show our work by dividing. We divide, we basically are doing the opposite operation of whatever is happening to our unknown, whatever is happening to our variable. What operation is happening to our variable, Rocco? Multiplication, so we do the opposite. We divide by 2 on each side. Divide by 2 on each side. 2 divided by 2 is 1. It goes away. We get A. 6 divided by 2 is 3. So, then for the next one, we have 20 equals 4C. What number am I going to be dividing? Am I going to be dividing the 20 or am I going to be dividing the 4? Diana, am I going to be dividing the 20 or am I going to be dividing the 4? 
the four because it's on the same side as my variable. So four divided by four goes away. I'm left with C, 20 divided by four equals five. I get five equals C. Last one. What am I gonna be doing here, Matthew? You don't know? You still don't know? Okay, so let's see. What would we be doing here? Romario. For three. What do we do, Lucy? We divide by 9.4 because that's the number that's on the same side as our variable. That goes away and we're left with G equals. Then we have 28.2. 28.2 divided by 9.4 is what, Lucy? Three. Excellent. So you guys are getting all confused here with variables, but in this case, what would the first step be, Ben? I divide 9,263 and 42 hundredths by both sides. Is that true? Yeah. No, that is not true. We are still making the same error, even though you all say it's too easy. What do we do, Miles? I mean, you divide 900, 9,263 and 42 hundredths by 200, 271 and... 738,000. Excellent. Yes. So we're dividing this one by this one. Is it only because we divide our bigger number by our smaller number? Is it only because we divide our bigger number by our smaller number? No, it's not. It's because this is on the same side as our variable. We got to get rid of whatever's on our variable. So let's write these out. The length of an object in feet is equal to three times its length in yards. The length of a water slide is 48 feet. 48 feet. So if we were writing our multiplication problem out, if we're writing our multiplication problem out, what is our multiplication, Elsie? So not, we have here 18C equals 90. I'm not exactly sure where any of that came from, seeing as none of those numbers are in our problem. Let's see. Oh, I see, they came from number five. Got it. What would we write here, Anita? 48 times three equals C. Or X or whatever. No, it is not. It is not this. Lucy, what is it? 3x equals 48. So this right here, what does this mean right here? You're, you're doing something to the variable. This is the yards. And we know it's our unknown because it says length in yards. And the feet is three times the length in yards. So feet equals 3x. Here, we have 48 feet, so how many yards is that gonna be? What am I gonna do to each side then? What do I do to each side then, Lily? Perfect, we divide each side by three. And in this case, what do we get, Lucy? 16. Elsie, what did you get for this one? Yeah, the, what was your equation? 18C equals 90. 18C equals 90. Great job because it costs, it takes 18 minutes for one CD and he did, he spent 90 minutes total. So how many CDs are unknown? What are we going to be dividing? Am I going to be dividing each side by 90 or each side by 18? Each side by 90, each side by 18. Alinza, each side by 90 or each side by 18? 18 divided by 18 divided by 18 and C is equal to Elsie now we're on number five. Oh, five 
C is equal to five. 16 is the answer for four. So when we're writing these equations, notice that we have a number and a variable on one side and then a number on the other. Okay. Number and variable on one side, number on other. That is how it's going to be the best way to write these problems. You must always show your work. You don't show your work, you don't get full credit. That's just the deal. Your homework is page 555. And it's going to be numbers 1 through, let's see. I think 1 through 11. 